A load of love's young dream. Do you mind? What's the matter with you? I'm only being fruity. Yeah, well, don't be in public. Oh, why? Right, this is the public, innit? Let's go in the select. Clever. Oh, well, I'll forget about the good news, then, eh? Hey, what good news? Oh, there's a bit of interest in creating, hasn't it? What good news? All right. <laughs> Ask me who's those couple of teas. Ask me who's bought Bidolf's shop. Oh, that. Who's bought Bidolf's shop? Me. That asked me who I'm putting in as manager S. Me? I'm answering the question. Mm. Look, uh, don't punch me on the nose, but I've been thinking. It strikes me you've got a bit of a boss complex, and there's not many jobs for bosses knocking about. Me? You've got to be joking. No, I'm not. You think on. Tell him. Hello, Elsie. Hello. Thanks, please, Ben. I'm glad you're here, mm -hmm. seeing as the Emperor of all the Russias is slumming it today. Yeah, watch it. You watch it, I'm busy. So I thought, uh, well, you've been on your own, I might have some help, you see. As I've got two spring dresses that I bought last year and I haven't worn them yet, and husband that's too pushed him to take bank holiday off, I thought that if you were going around any, say, uh, housing estates, you might kiss the babies and I could look after the dads. Make a nice change, wouldn't it? Well, for the dads. <laughs> you be careful, cheeky. No go. Well, I've got an appointment this afternoon that might be of interest. Go on, go on, go on. It's the Weatherfield Derby and John Club. Now, before you say it, don't jump to any conclusions. Oh, very good it's guy. a hot day for Bryce. Well, then it's no place for me, is it? <laughs> See ya. Ta-da. Did you hear what she said? What? About Alan being too busy to take bank holiday off. He might need a bit of help. Hey, heck. <laughs> I'd have to get rid of my boss complex then, wouldn't I? No, Alan might be worth it. Those tuppence a fortnight lending libraries, stationery, sweets, a few toys, hot drinks, you know, a bit of a cafe, things like that. It sounds all right. Yeah, of course it is. And there's the flat above. Yeah, so you said. Very handy. Mm. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking it was handy for work. What were you thinking? Oh, the same. Mm. It's me handy for work. <laughs> I'm uh, just off to make pieces. How else you want? Another shop, block of flats. No, I'll just go and pick up the order, mate. That's if you're back working, are you? I see you've uh, lost your bird. Oh, I've got plans for her. <laughs> Damn! What's the matter? I've only given him half a tail, haven't I? You carry on talking. I hope the middle of chain doesn't disturb you. Got you at it, have they? Well, you can judge me feelings when I tell you. I'll be very glad when Annie Walker gets back. If she gets back. I've just bought myself a tea towel as a memento. You'd never guess who sold it to me. The Duke of Bedford. Oh, I hardly think the service is called well. I'm quite sure his grace has people to do that sort of thing for him. Shall we go up? Can we? Well, if she says so, we can. She thinks she owns the place. I could have it back about five, it'd do. Yes, that should be all right, Ray. I've got half an hour to do on this one, I can get cracking on yours. Uh-huh. What's all the urgency? You got a new girlfriend? She's a girlfriend of yours, mate. Just a friend of mine. Deirdre. Now, don't mention that name. Still a sore point with Elsie. Well, the wound hasn't quite healed yet, you know. Well, I better warn you. She's going to be running here permanent. Len's bought Biddulph's shop, and I'm putting Deirdre in as manageress, so uh, next time you talk to Elsie, if you still do talk to her, that is, you better drop it into the conversation casual. With a dull thud? Mm. Thank you very much, Ray. I'll see you at five o'clock, then, eh? Yeah, OK. Hello. Is Alan Howard going to get you work at all done today? Uh, a bit pushed, are you? You could put it that way, yes, Billy. Well, I didn't exactly appear in a puff of smoke from out of a lamp, but uh, I'm here to do your bidding, old master. Are well, you looking for work? Yeah. Well, what about next week, Billy? You mean starting next week? No, I mean just next week. Oh, uh, I was thinking of something a bit more permanent than that. You see, I've, I've felt for some time that I've not been pulling my weight at the Rovers, so I promised my mum I'd go out into the wide, wide world and fetch in a bit of bread. 
Well, I just thought it'd be nice if she had some news, you know, when she got back today. Well, Billy, I haven't been thinking in terms of taking on permanent staff. Look, do you want to check back in an hour? I'm expecting some word about a couple of jobs I got on. It might just swing the decision one way or the other. Check back at four o'clock? Come, you said, so I've come. Yeah, what about? Oh, yes, the job is finally fixed. That manager ass thing at Biddulph's, honest. Why should I lie? I don't even love you. That's true, that's very true. Hey, that's great. Mm -hmm. How can I show me undying gratitude? Well, I'm open to ideas. Do you want any electric plugs fitting? I'm very good yes, at that. Yes, yes, I know. Look, if you want any furniture moving, I'll have the van tonight. It's, uh, it's the shop that wants fitting. The flat's ready. Yeah, well, I'll be in that pub at half past five and I'll know by then. Good. You can buy me a drink. Yeah, I might just do that. Queen Victoria State Bedroom. <laughs> it's oh, fantastic. Wow. She was smaller than you, you know, Queen Victoria. Uh, her bed's bigger than mine. Still, mm. it doesn't look any comfier. It uh, wouldn't be a spring interior, would it, Ina? I shouldn't think so. It'll be flock. It took its name, however, from Queen Victoria's visit here in 1841. The fireplace is by John de Val and cost £100 in 1756. Let's see, that's the equivalent of about 14 million today. It's equivalent to nothing. You couldn't buy work like that for love nor money. Fellas in them days used to devote their lives to it. Nowadays, all they devote their lives to is carrying banners and asking for more pay. It must be hard work carrying banners, though, Ina. Do you know what you're saying? Yes, it uh, were meant to be a joke. Mm, so long as we know. <laughs> all right, shall we press on? Seems yes. a shame, Come on, still. Ken, you and I lead the way. Right. Ready, Edina? Do you want more? Yes, when you are. Queen Victoria State Bedroom. <sighs> By the act, there's some dusting in here, Chuck. Aye, right, I'll uh, hear it then. Oh, give us a minute, Stan. Eh? I mean, like Fair Marie says. You've got to drink it all in. Right. There you are, you see? K sera, sera. Here. I wonder if that Doris Day film was about round here. Hey, sera, sera. Hey, Jack. Is there a bar in the house like a beer house, you know? Not as far as I know. Well, it should be, shouldn't it? I mean, it's thirsty work going round here, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> Thanks a lot. Come on. Come and get it. You know what you are, don't you? Subversive. The wheels of industry grinding to a halt. Oh, sure up and drink your tea. Yes, ma'am, but I'm a bit pushed for time, you know. So am I. In fact, I shouldn't be here at all. I thought to myself, there's my husband over there working hard, who loves me to interrupt him, so I'll just go over and interrupt him. No, no. No? What have I just said? I'm sorry, love, I wasn't listening. <laughs> it's all right. Restrain yourself. I had Billy Walker in here earlier on. Oh, look at you. Looking for a job. Oh? Well, I said I'd think about it. And have you? Yes, and the more I think about it, the more I like the idea. You know, work's been piling up here since Colin left, and you're always saying I never take another time off. Alan, it's not that I don't think it's a good idea, but does it have to be Billy Walker? I mean, you know, I've got my captain working for me now. It never does work, does well, why it? why shouldn't it be all right when Billy wants the job? He thinks he's frittering his life away at the rover's return. Now he's putting something into the place instead of just taking it out. Or at least he's trying. That's his story, is it? Well, that's what he says. And what do you mean, that's his story? Look, Alan, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I do know that Billy's gambling a lot lately and losing and taking money out of his mother's bank account and paying creditors with rubber cheques. I think this idea of a job is Annie's and not his. You don't give him a very good reference, do you? Oh, Alan, look, I hate talking about anybody like that. But I don't want you to be the next one that swindled. Look, I'm thinking about you first. Now, that's the way you want it, isn't it? Yes, that's the way I want it. Right then.
managed to get ahead of all the others when we was behind them earlier on. No, no, love. Hang on. You've been taking shortcuts, haven't you? Missing places out so you can get back to that boozer. Well, I've got news for you. It's gone three o'clock, so you can just put that tongue of yours away. <sighs> yes, Chuck. Oh, honey, Stan, you make me despair. I mean, you got the rest of your life for boozing in. Fancy thinking about a pint of coloured water when you're here in the... Camalito room. Perhaps one of the most famous rooms in the world is this private dining room where the 21 views of Venice by Antonio Camalito, 1697-1768. Hang. Why did they hang him? The pictures you daft ate, but not in what painted them. Oh. Luke Stan, one of the most famous rooms in the world. And we're in it. Oh. Not licensed, so is it? See what you mean. Just <coughs> like Kendall Mill. When we finish with this place, it'll be a little palace. What will it be, Ray? A little palace. Fit for a queen. <laughs> Wait, it better be. Hey, hang on. If I was to say I promised the job of manager S here. Ah, no. You'd say you'd promised it to the lovely Rita, wouldn't you? <laughs> What's all this about? It's like I was saying in the pub. I only gave him half a story. Yes, I would. Well, I'd say you were too late, mate. And I'd say you were too flipping early, mate. And I'd remind you whose flaming idea it was. Mine in the first place. And I'd remind you whose flaming money it was. And whose name's going on the title deeds. Look, you knew I was going to fix it with this bird, so don't come the old innocent with me, mate. I'm not coming the old anything, mate. This is my shop, she's my bird, and she gets the job, so oh, shut great, it. great. Who's he off at job to? You don't know her. Yes, she does. She's that girl who was round at Alan's, uh, Deirdre. Oh, her? Uh? Yes, sir. All right, Chuck. Don't jump down my throat. I didn't know you got a thing going. He's got nothing going with anyone. He was just playing the big I am Mr. Fixer, weren't you? It didn't work this time, though, did it? OK, OK. I was going to say something at dinner time, but you'd gone before I could open my mouth. I'm sorry. If Rita says it's OK, your bird can move in here working as number two. She'll want the flat. Oh, no danger. That's hers. I bet my passport's out of date and all. So that's it, then. I'm sorry. Well, it's a funny old world, isn't it? Only seems like yesterday that I was flogging you to gaff. What happened to the money, Billy? Oh, you know, it is. just goes, doesn't it, when you're not watching? Yeah, it does. One of these? No. I wish. I sometimes wish I was a bit more like the old fella. Happy with next to nothing. Kept a backstreet pub all his life. His idea of having a game of bowls. I knew him, you know, Billy. Yeah, I know. Perhaps it wasn't as simple as that. I suppose he had some up. Well, he was contented. He was one of the lucky ones. I mean, there's nothing wrong about being discontented, as long as you know what to do about it. I mean, you could be discontented one way and discover penicillin. You can be discontented another way and start World War Three. I'm somewhere between the two myself. Well, most people are. Anything I can do? I'll let you know. See you. And uh, may your guards be with you. <laughs> or whatever it is he says. Inspection department, please. Oh, hello, love. It's me. No, nothing. I just, uh, I expect to get finished early, and I wondered whether we might go for a drink and perhaps go into town and have a meal. No, no, not really celebrating anything. Except perhaps how lucky we are. Will you look at this? Yeah. Not bad, is it? Can I let her... Uh... You know, we've even heard about this in Connecticut. Hey, look at those paintings. We've got our back room decorated like this. Only we're thinking of going modern. Oh, really? So are we. <laughs> <laughs> How divine.
I shouldn't touch that, madam. There's an alarm system. Oh, thank you. I know you, Dora Braithwaite. Well, it's Wayne right now. Don't tell me. It's Ina. Ina Schofield. Sharples. Would you believe it? How long's it been? Well, I left Manchester in 1914. Two months before war started, so you can tell. 1914. Mm. It's a miracle our folk can remember so long, is it? But I knew you the minute I clapped eyes on you. Do I know her over there? Minnie Colwell. Well, she was a Carlton then, but you wouldn't remember her so well. She was in the class after us. No, it's just that there was something about it. Oh, here comes his grace. Everything all right, Mrs Wainwright? Yes, thank you, your grace. Do you know that this lady and I haven't met for... Nearly 60 years. Really? Mrs Sharples, your grace. Delighted to meet you, Mrs thank Sharples. You. you must have an awful lot to talk about. May I introduce a friend of mine, your grace, Mrs Minnie Colwell? Oh, Mrs Colwell, I've met already. I had the pleasure of selling her a tea towel. And Mrs. Annie Walker. Mrs. Walker? Your Grace, may I say what a superb house you have. You certainly may, thank you. <laughs> and this is my great nephew from America, Tom Schofield and his wife, Faye Marie. Hello, sir. How are you? I had the pleasure of attending one of your lectures back home, Your Grace. And we've seen you so often on television. Let me see now, when was the last time? Was it the Dick Cavett show? Uh, yes, yes, I think it was. Indeed it was. I thought so. Do you think I dare, Tom? I'll give you a thousand guesses what my grandmother's family name was. Uh, Russell? Well, would you believe that? Now <laughs> you excuse me. Do enjoy yourselves. Thank you. What a charming man. Ah, uh, there's less sad on him than you'll find in a back street pub. Oh, uh, is somebody after you? Hi. Oh, hi, love. Uh, look, you go and sit over there and I'll, I'll bring the drinks across. What will it be? Go on, I'll be a devil. Grapefruit juice. Go on, I'll bring it across. Look as if you can't wait to get out. Well? It's, uh, it's bad news. Well, I mean, you... You go through life expecting folk to do the right thing and when they don't, it lets you down. Um, well, when it lets you down, it lets other people down, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Am I supposed to pay for that? Oh, no. There you go. Keep the change. Well, give us another five and I might. <clears throat> you were on about letting people down. Yeah. It, it was Len. I, I'm not saying it was his fault, but it was his money and he put his bird in. I never thought he would. But he did? Yeah. I see. So what am I supposed to do? I'll give me a room up, turn down that chance of a job I was offered, so here I am. Said goodbye to 17 quid a week and nowhere to live. What are you going to do about it? Me? No, not you. The fellow that said he'd get me a job as a manageress. Told me to get my gear packed and he'd move me in this flat with matching cups and saucers. Look, I can't manage 17 quid a week. All right, start looking so miserable. I don't give me room up or, or me job. It's the number one rule of my life. If a fella tells you something's going to happen, don't believe him, even after it's happened. So cheer up, drink up, and I'll buy you another. Hey, you're a great girl. What took you so long? Okay. What are you going to? Yeah. A pint of it, please, Bet and Right. Now, what's all this about? Oh, something special. Evening. Hello, buddy. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, I'll tell you something about your old man. You don't muck about. Betty, I'm uh, just going to nip upstairs for a minute if you want me. All right, love. Thanks. Thank you. I see. You told him. Yes, I told him. Well, now forget about it. Cheers. Cheers. Hello. Hello. It's Deirdre. Yes, I know, don't I? I mean, this is the young lady that spends the night in our house when I'm away. Have you done any more of that lately, love? No, not a lot, Mrs Howard. It gets a bit boring. It's the ones who don't sleep you have to be afraid of. <laughs> She's dead right, John. Buy a drink. What? What are you going to have? Well, I'm uh, getting one for Melancholy Baby over there. Oh. Well, buy him one as well. well. That's a pint and a grapefruit juice, please. A pint and a grapefruit juice, please. That's our love. 
Now go and keep him company. What I've just got... Now go and keep him company. I've heard about 16 different versions about what happened that night. Now I'd like the truth. What were you doing in our house? How did you manage to get into that bed? Oh, they were now clever about it. Any fool could have done it. <laughs> and you're telling me he's made a fortune out of this dump? Well, he's only got a £10,000 house on the Costa del Sol and chance it. But how? Well, it's places like this that make all the money, you know. Quick turnover, no wastage, big public demand. Hello, Mr. Mayor. I thought I saw you through that window. Uh, Ernie Bishop wants to see us. Ten o'clock tomorrow. Their house. It's about this street party, OK? Oh, I have heard about that, yeah. Just surveying your new kingdom, then, are you? I'm just telling her about Bidolf's place in Spain. Uh, that's what it comes of having a wealthy widow in tow. A what? Yeah, he's got this 60-year-old widow. She thinks her son shines out of him. She bought the villa. He ain't got to and safety to rub together. I'll, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. You were saying? Hi. Hi, Alina. Is there something wrong with me and Ken, Mrs. Sharples? Hey. Yeah, we was the only two you didn't introduce to the Jews. Oh, don't be daft. He'd had enough. He must get a lot of that. Yeah, well, as long as you're not ashamed of us. Oh, I don't think Annie you know, could be ashamed of Ken. Well, it must be me then. Or you. Anyway, here it is. Come on, kids, line up. All right. Get There's no stopping on the way, you know. I know. Well, it's been a good day, but let's get back. Ah, yes, indeed, Mrs. Sharples. Be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. That's right. Right, Billy, I'm off. Oh, Mrs. Sharples. Yeah, okay, you up it. I'll look up. Hey. How about a brotherly kiss? Hey, watch it. <laughs> you weren't kidding, were you? Go on, up it. Before I do something you might enjoy. Watch out for yourself. No danger. Trap. 